Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are here in uh, Barcelona at Mobile World Congress 2017 and I am talking with Daryl Jordan-Smith, Vice President Global ICT Sales and Ian Hood, Chief Architect, Global Service Provider at good old Red Hat. Gentlemen, great to see you again. Big show, good show? Excellent show, good to be here. Okay. Let's talk. Let's start with you, if we could please, Daryl. Um, let's talk about open source. Right. Open source seems to have been around forever and a day. Right. Uh, but it's always been a sort of Cinderella of the industry in many ways. And things are changing. Now more and more companies are sort of making use of it. What's causing, suddenly causing, the open source market to open up in the way that it is doing? And do you expect that trend to continue? Well, first of all, I expect the trend to continue. I think open source over the last years has really matured. People are beginning to trust the process, understand the process, be educated about the process, and they realize that open source can now innovate traditional proprietary-based uh, software de development methodologies. So from our perspective, you know, having many thousands of people focused on a particular problem, innovating around a particular problem, contributing together around a particular problem, reviewing the code that actually is formed in terms of open source to drive better quality, you know, faster paces to innovation and therefore deployment. So certainly in the telecommunications market, a lot of our customers are learning about open source and are feeling very comfortable about using it and actually contributing themselves. Thank you. Ian, one for you now. Um, how can CSPs specifically take advantage of open source? Or put it another way, what's in it for them? Um, well, there's a couple of things. Um, so Dale already kind of talked about the fact that you know, the operators can actually move faster, innovate quicker, since we're collaborating in open source. Um, but the real key thing that it actually gives them is the choice you know, to build a platform for their services and build that across a multi-vendor environment which they operate in. Uh, that's a real key thing for them to be able to do, which drives their costs, improves their services, and drives their revenue quicker. Are there times then, okay, so we're eulogizing open source and saying it's much more useful than it used to be. People are taking cognizance of it, it's being used more. How, are there times ever, do you think, Daryl, when um, open source doesn't make sense in a CSP environment? Well, there are certain applications out there that need to get time to market a lot faster. Sometimes the open source process can take a little longer to mature in order to get it to, to market. But from our perspective, there are certain applications and certain standards and certain topologies that are faster entries into market by using proprietary software. So we see it as a heterogeneous environment. You're going to have a combination of open source components and proprietary components in order to build the total solution. Ian, what do you have to add to that as um, an architecture man? You know, so you know, as, as Daryl mentioned, it's kind of this you know, faster to market, but I may not be able to get those applications out as quickly as I like. But even in the architecture itself, um, these applications, some of them can only be virtualized or containerized. Um, but not all of them, and thus we're going to end up with a hybrid distributed virtual architecture in which I'm going to still have proprietary hardware-based platforms um, for quite some time. And that's the reality of it, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and from our perspective, there are a lot of companies who have a proprietary business model, and they're not just going to disappear. So they've still got to innovate, they've still got to make money, they've still got to deliver those solutions. There's a significant amount of legacy there that needs to be supported. So it's not going to go away. Exactly. I think, I think open source is going to innovate and work around those, those, those proprietary technologies and, and deliver value in the way that we just recently described. Now, and, the, and the CSPs are going to really you know, want to make main sure that they actually can you know, keep these assets, the legacy ones, as long as they can, you know, and not just throw them out and you know, keep that going yeah. and make this a, a hybrid environment, as I mentioned. In your experience, what open source projects are showing the most traction in the CSP market right now? Well, obviously OpenStack, the whole uh, discussion around cloud, um, the, the many discussions you and I have had in the past around NFE, Network Function Virtualization, and more importantly, we're seeing topics around automation and management and orchestration. Open source projects like Ansible as an example, um, the combination of OpenO, which is a management orchestration project, with AT&T's Ecom project coming together. And we're seeing customers 
developing their own open source initiatives, which is very exciting for us because they are using many different components of open source technologies and other projects that exist out there to drive solutions at a much faster pace into the marketplace. The other things that are you know, becoming really important for them is how do they handle the service assurance and the analytic sides of these um, solutions and where they're really focused now is on the APIs and the open source APIs for the messaging in this telco framework so they can get that to their back office system. So yep. that's the next piece that they're spending some time on and becoming um, very important in these open source MANO back office sides of the equation. How does Red Hat, the company, uh, your company, work to bring these solutions to market then and to make them carry a grade above all? Well, it really comes down to how we integrate the pieces together and make sure that they work as a complete system. And we were talking, you know, the carrier grade you know, nomenclature has really always been kind of a hardware thing. Yep. Um, and the software piece of that really needs to kind of be changed so that I can actually build the architecture horizontally. And so what it really becomes is what's known as an always on environment. You know, so we can have services constantly and a, in a cloud native horizontal scale approach. So the carrier grade is really kind of evolving to that cloud native always on kind of approach. That's what we're doing to kind of help them evolve this architecture in that manner. It's all about, as, as Ian was just saying, about creating applications that are stateless and are in the cloud. So the traditional sense from a telco perspective is around five or six or seven nines as it's called. That, doesn't, that paradigm doesn't really exist in the cloud. It's all about how you create applications, how you actually devolve those applications, how they interoperate with each other in order to deliver the interoperability as well as the security and scalability of that environment to provide a seamless service to the customer. Gentlemen, great as usual. I wouldn't expect anything else. Thanks very much. Well, thank you. Thank you.